Welcome, welcome everyone. Welcome to the Bridge Builders of Diversity, where we are bridging the gap between the disability community and the typical community. I'm Sherry. I'm a mother of a child with Down syndrome, and this is Roberta. She's a special educator. We have a disclaimer for today's video. We will be discussing sex and safety from sexual abuse. Please be advised that this topic is not suitable for all viewers. So if there are people for whom this topic is not appropriate, please take appropriate measures. Absolutely. So under Article 12 of the United Nations Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities guarantees disabled people the right to enjoy legal capacity on an equal basis to others in all aspects of their lives. Although not explicit in this article, such aspects include those pertaining to sex and relationships. Sexuality and sexual relationships are fundamental parts of every human life and are critical to overall physical, emotional, and social health and well being. Remember that people with disabilities are people first and disabled second. Absolutely. Sexuality and sexual relationships are fundamental parts of every human life and are critical to overall physical, emotional, and social health. As pointed out by the um, United Health Organizations in 2012, sexuality is a global issue central to human development and thus requires, and I quote, positive and respectful approaches to sexuality and sexual relationships as well as the possibility of having pleasurable and safe sexual experiences, free from coercion, discrimination, and violence. So armed with knowledge about sexual rights and differences between healthy and risky sexual choices and exchanges, disabled people are also better positioned to resist sex sexual violence and abuse in different social spaces throughout their lives. This being said, it is still a source of anxiety for both the individual with disabilities and their caregivers. And this anxiety may come from impairments with their physical bodies or their physical abilities to engage in a reg regular sex life, or makes an individual, an individual may lack confidence or may feel worried about having sex. Lots of people with or without disabilities have anxiety about sex and sexual performance. And these feelings are completely natural. It is through education and open and honest conversations that we are able to calm these anxieties, both for people with disabilities and their caregivers. Support and information are available if you feel you need help in developing relationships, exploring and or expressing your sexuality or, sex, or ask, accessing sexual health information and services. This also applies if your disability comes from a chronic illness. Having an open and honest conversation with your healthcare provider will be helpful to provide the information that you're looking for. If talking to your healthcare professional about sex makes you embarrassed or afraid, Remember, sex is completely natural subject and your healthcare professional should be used to being asked questions about it. Remember, your healthcare provider is a person too. On top of this, many able-bodied people tend to regard sex for people with disability a taboo subject and rarely discuss it openly. Society tends to have an idealized image of sexuality, attractive, and anyone, whether with a disability or not, who doesn't meet the standard can feel dis diminished or dismissed. This is not accurate or true. And information about disability and sex tends to focus only on function or fertility and not on perfectly natural feelings and emotions like attraction, desire, and love. To be seen as a non-sexual being can be devastating. Feelings of isolation and inadequacy leave people with disabilities vulnerable to sexual predators. Their desire to feel attractive and accepted can lead to unsafe choices. According to Australian researchers, rates of abuse, especially sexual abuse, are shockingly high for people with disabilities. According to research by women with disabilities in Australia, 90% of women with an intellectual disability have been sexually abused. And one quarter of all reported rapes against women in Victoria, Australia, 
are against women with disabilities. The most important tool we have against sexual assault is information. Teach your children, disabled or not, boundaries and how to stand up for themselves. If you're a parent with a, of a child with a disability, it may be helpful to have appropriate information about puberty, menstruation. And remember, most disabilities don't affect when a girl starts menstruating. And also romantic and sexual relationships. Have this information on hand for your child. Yes. Children and teenagers with intellectual disabilities may need longer to get used to the idea of changes that come with puberty. You can help them by preparing before puberty starts. Uh, for girls from ages 8 to 13 and boys 9 to 14. <laughs> we are Bridge Builders of Diversity. Bridge the disabled community and the typical community through education and dialogue. And if you like our content, please like and share and subscribe to our channel. And you can always drop us a comment down below um, for any topics or anything you'd like to see. And we appreciate that. We do. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.